Ah, you found me. Hello, boys and girls, I'm Mr. Norman, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about a movement called Pop Art. These are some of the pictures from the 1930s and 40s. This is how they looked. We have a wonderful scene of buildings, very traditional. People, dogs, buildings, trees. Wonderful landscapes. They all look very nice. They're a little drab, a little mm, missing something. And then came along... Parts! Pictures were bold, they were bright, they looked really interesting. And they were based on popular things. That's why it's called pop art, popular culture. Pop art took everyday objects, such as, oh, I don't know, oh, banana, mm. a soda can, and they said, you know what, these look like art to me. I think I'm going to put this in a painting. I think I'm going to blow this up 20 times larger and put it on a wall. And guess what? They did. You may be thinking to yourself, Mr. Norman, that's all great and good, but that was the 1960s. What does pop art do for me today? Ah, it does a lot for you today. In fact, without pop art, we may not have those awesome shirts that you wear, all those great, wonderful sneakers that you have on. Pop art allowed everyone to do art. Everything that you saw could become art. And it let people know that the advertisements in magazines, comics, all these great things can now become art. Think about what you have today in your life. The popular things. The popular gadgets that you have, or the toys, or the clothes that you wear. Think about how artists design those. It's very much the style of pop art. And you'll take a look closer at some pop artists, namely Andy Warhol, and Roy Lichtenstein on the next couple pages. So let's recap. Pop art was a big art movement in the 1960s. It used everyday objects as the subject of their art, bright bold colors, and influenced our culture by making us think of everything as art, such as t-shirts, jewelry, clothing, and shoes. 